Hello and welcome to another edition of Fix It with Kronk. This time we have our over the stove microwave oven has died. This is a GE model JVM 3160RF3SS. Just put in four years ago and we have found that there is a door switch that is causing this problem. So in order to get to this door switch, you're probably wondering how I found out that it's a door switch. There are two screws in the top. Just undo these screws. One on the left and one on the right. Now you also want to make sure that your circuit is off or the microwave is unplugged or both. So in the top of this unit there is this plastic panel and it just slides in there. Once you take the screws out that panel comes off. Now interestingly enough down in the top of here there is a screw right there. So you have to undo that screw in order to take the control panel off. So I'm going to pause the video and do that. Usually for that top screw, it's a good idea to use a magnetic tip screwdriver to get it out. So you'll notice that on the front here, I actually had to push, uh, put two labels on, push cancel bleed for opening because every time the uh, microwave would be opened, that circuit would trip. So this side panel lifts off and you'll see that there are three plugs here holding it in. I'm going to pause the video while I unplug these. Be careful on these because they uh, are held on with little plastic clips. Okay, so I've taken the uh, panel off. Be careful because these uh, plastic hooks in the bottom, you want to make sure to lift them out completely and not break them off because uh, they're important. So in here then on the side, you'll see that there are three switches. There's one in the top, um, one in the top, one in the middle, and then one underneath that. Now previously I had taken these switches out and had sh uh, tested the switches to find out that the middle one was actually gunked up with, oh, I don't know, kitchen grease and stuff like that. So what you have to do is you have to take these two screws out. I'm holding the camera with one hand, so I'm going to pause this. But this screw and this screw have to be removed. Okay, so now my screws are removed, and you'll see that um, there is a top plug, and that pulls right off. And then the middle plug, that pulls right off. And the bottom plug and that pulls right off. So you can tuck those wires out of the way and this uh, component here that has the switches and lifts up, it's held in with a couple of plastic hooks, lifts up and pulls out. You have to kind of maneuver it a little bit to get it out of there. So I'm going to pause the video so I can use both hands. So here's the unit that I've gotten out of the, um, the door and the three switches. Here's the top one, the middle one, and the bottom one. You can test these with a meter. Um, and, uh, but one of the things that you can do is you can listen to hear if they click when you depress them. Because inside here, you'll see there's a little switch. See that little white switch in there? If you can depress that and it makes a click, clicking noise, you can get a good impression as to whether that switch is working. So, 
You hear that clicking? That means that that switch is, is good. Now here's the bottom one. Can't get my screwdriver in there. And you hear there's no clicking on that one. Actually, that's the middle one. <clears throat> that middle one is problematic. Because when the door closes, it pushes up against that. And uh, there's a problem with that. It's not clicking. The bottom one, the bottom one is this black one. you can hear that one clicking. So what I did previously was I took this out. Now there's a little, there's a little pin right in there, that little white clip. You don't want to break that off. You want to lift it up and allow the um, switch to pop out. So let me put it on pause so I can use both hands. Okay, so I got my camera stand to help me out here. So... Um, this little clip is what we're looking at just lifting up enough to pop the switch out. You can grab it from the back side, lift this clip up just enough. We need a pair of needle nose to grab it. So I had previously, what I had previously done with this switch, and you see it doesn't click. I sprayed contact cleaner in here and it worked again. But I wrote down the numbers that are on the side here, KW3AT16. When you have a micro switch like this, that has to click. Now, I'm not going to show you how to test it with a continuity tester. Um, but you would put a probe on each one of these, set it to resistance, and uh, it's either normally open or normally closed. So we purchased uh, some other replacement switches on Amazon. So actually it was a two pack. And see it's the same model, KW3AT16. But that little switch works. So we're just going to replace the switch. We're going to put it back in here. So we want to make sure the orientation is the same as the other one. And we want to lift this little white pin up. Oops, put it the wrong way. Okay, there we go. Make sure this little white pin is up so the switch can slide in and lock in place. There are some slots in the side of the switch or the, these little holes that that little pin pops into. And you see the red button there. So now that switch is replaced. And the probes or the uh, Pins are all the same here where they were before. You might want to take a paper towel or something and just kind of wipe the gritty stuff out of there. So when that door closes, the door will push against that switch. And that switch is what was the problem. So, let's see, uh, we reverse the process, and we're going to put this back in, see these little hooks? Um, there's a little hook right here, and a little hook up at the top. Those go into those slots, this slot, and this slot. I'm going to pause the video to uh, put it back. 
Okay then, so uh, the switch module is back in place. I got my screws back. Tighten them in, top and bottom. Once you get your screws back in, you can put your, your plugs back. That's the top one. These two go to the uh, panel that we removed. Here's the middle one. And here's the bottom one. You want to make sure to get all, uh, get both of the uh, um, tabs aligned properly so that it clicks in place there. So then then we can get the uh, panel back and you just well, first of all you want to reconnect those uh, settings so those those pins I'm gonna do that now okay our um, wires are reconnected then you want to reconnect these hooks and it lifts up just a little bit under those hooks and then it slides down. There's a hook at the top. Don't forget that screw that goes up inside there in the top. We'll go put that in place now. And as I said before, you want to uh, probably have the best luck if you use a screwdriver that's magnetized to put that one in. Then you want to take the uh, plastic piece that's here now uh, we have this spare switch i'm going to keep that in the box and just so that i don't forget about it i'm going to put it up in here where i have some fuses that uh, i purchased for repairing this when you slide this unit back in you want to make sure that the tab goes in between the top and the the top and the uh, inside. So once you uh, do that, you want to get your uh, top screws reinstalled. Make sure that the door is aligned properly. And you can close it. And I had turned the breaker off, so we're gonna go sit, reset the breaker, and we'll see what happens. Okay. Well, I um, reset it, and my fan works. Okay, so I reset it. I'm gonna try it out with some water. Put a cup of water in here for 30 seconds. We'll see what happens. Cup seems to be rotating around. We're still going to take the caution of trying to remember to push cancel before opening, but looks like we got a fix.